Hi everyone, um, welcome to week seven. Um, today I'm going to be going through um, the prompt for SA2. Um, and so it's a pretty simple prompt and you guys um, uh, probably saw it already, but um, I'll just um, go through it uh, in details and, and then I will talk more about uh, chapter seven, um, specifically um, Patrick O'Malley's uh, sample essay, right? Uh, more testing, more learning. So I'll go through that um, and kind of talk about what he's doing there and what sort of structural things you can kind of um, imitate, right? Um, and use in your own uh, paper. Um, so just a friendly reminder, the, uh, the second essay is due um, next Wednesday. Right, um, and uh, like always, you're you're, you know, if if you need extension, just let me know. I'm happy to give that to you. Um, I'm not very strict on. I don't really. I'm not very strict on um, uh, on due dates. Right, um, I have due dates because I want us to have some kind of um, sort of. Uh, some kind of structure, right, and follow uh, a certain kind of time frame. But um, I know that people have different, especially during these times, right, um, we need to be sort of more flexible. Um, and so, yeah, uh, if we, as long as you're communicating with me and uh, telling me when you're going to submit your uh, paper, I'm happy to give you um, as many day extension as you need, right? But all, also keep in mind that the more extension you ask, uh, that means that your work is going to be pushed, right, um, to to sort of later on, and then the essay three will be due. So you you might be putting uh, more work for yourself, right? Um, if you keep sort of like pushing that, even though you know I'm not deducting you for for being late. Um, and so just keep that in mind. You have those options, right? Um, if, if you need them, um, as long as you're communicating with me, it's not going to be a problem. Um, okay. So for this lecture, just have your uh, prompt for SA2 um, handy, um, as well as um, the, the uh, video, uh, this week's uh, video notes um, also handy, which I will be um, attaching with with the email. Um, okay, so we'll we'll go through the prompt first, right? Um, and it's it's pretty it's pretty similar to the first one, right? So the basic features are still um, a focused, um, right? So let's just like start with for this essay. You will identify a social or political problem and propose a solution to that problem. Right. You may also take your position from SA1 and develop that into a solution uh, to a problem. So, as I mentioned before, right, um, and most of you um, have already submitted your uh, SA2 proposal, topic proposal, and I've I've replied to you. Um, and so, if you if you submitted a proposal and you did not hear from, back from me, um, let me know uh, because I responded to everyone. Um, who sent me their proposal, right? So I must have missed your uh, email in that case. Um, if you still, if you haven't sent me your proposal yet, feel free to to send it, um, and I'm happy to um, to to give you feedback, right? Um, and obviously, as you work through your uh, paper, uh, just uh, stay in touch with me and meet with me uh, through Zoom if you want. Just let me know. Uh, I'm happy to do that. <laughs> Okay, so so most of you have your topics uh, chosen already and have your solutions uh, chosen. Um, so the basic features really are, are just to to have a, a focused and well-defined problem, right? So you need to explain what the problem is, right? Um, a well-argued solution, right? So you obviously you have to the point of this paper is for you to have a solution and then sort of explain why your solution will work, right? And then an effective response uh, to objections and alternative solutions, right? 
Um, so acknowledging opposing viewpoints, what criticisms uh, are there against your, your solutions, um, and what alternative solutions are there available, right? Um, just acknowledging them, even though you're not saying that they're bad or they're worse than yours, you can just acknowledge that, oh, there's also other approaches out there that, uh, that could also work, right? And then a clear and logical um, organization, right? That's the, the structure of your paper, having an introduction, having um, a thesis, having sort of um, a, a body paragraphs that uh, explain your position, your solution, and your examples, right? So again, this paper uh, must have a clear thesis um, that is not a listing thesis, right? Um, along with my email, when, when I send this uh, video out, um, I will also give you um, an article that will talk talk about um, what what the listing thesis is, right? Uh, a lot a lot of you have asked me about it, um, and so um, I'll have a um, an article that sort of talks about that, but simplistically, you know, you don't want a thesis that will say, um, my paper will do A, B, and C, or D, right? Um, you want sort of like a thesis that explains, as opposed to doing a list, right? So you want your thesis to, um, to say something like, the problem is blah, 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 right? And then for that, I, I intend to to provide the solution of blah, 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 right? So, so you're sort of like explaining on, on the one hand what the problem is and summarizing on the one hand what your solution is, right? So, so it's, and you know, that could, you know, there, there are some, uh, some theses that will sound like they're listing because they're sort of listing or summarizing the different approaches to, so, you know, this is not like a clear cut, you know, listing and, you know, and explaining, right? Um, so, so there is a way in which it could, a thesis could sound like um, listing. Um, and so don't worry too much about that. I'm not going to be like, oh, this is a listing thesis. You get a B instead of an A, right? Like that's, that's not how I grade it. But, but just for you to know, right, what a listing thesis is and, and, and how to sort of, not do a listing thesis. It's just, you know, um, you want some a thesis that sounds like an explanation, right? As opposed to a list uh, is really, you know, sort of the difference. <clears throat> but I, I have an article that sort of like explains that better um, that I will uh, give you all. Um, and just like the first paper, uh, you need at least three uh, reliable sources, at least one. Um, is uh, should be a scholarly article, right? And and then you need to include a works cited page, right? A lot of people had issues um, with works cited page on their first paper, so I will talk more about that later. Um, and then your paper must follow MLA citation style and be a minimum of twelve hundred words, right? Uh, four to five pages. Um, so 1,200 words, make sure you're checking that that does not include your works cited page, right? So just check uh, the word count as you go, right? Um, and usually, you know, I would, I would say don't go over 200 words, right? So you need to do at least 1,200, but I would say maximum 1,400, right? Um, so yeah, just try to keep that in mind. Um, okay, so so the essay is due on the 20th, uh, 1159. Okay, so I've listed here sort of, um, you know, if, if you go towards the, 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 the last part of chapter seven, right, um, you will see, let me see. You will see a section there. Um, where is it? Right. So, so um, 
chapter seven, you like right after all of the essays, right? You will see a section that has, uh, you know, sort of like how to write a draft, right? Um, how to explain a solution. So you have all of this sort of um, uh, guide, right, on, on how to sort of construct your paper. So I really recommend reading that part of of the chapter if you haven't already, because that will kind of like break it down for you, like how to write an introduction, how to write a thesis, how to write a, so, um, so yeah, that's on chapter seven, and that's the later part of, of the chapter. And so, and so here, and what, what that does, right, is sort of um, explain to you that there should be a problem, right, um, and then argue a solution, um, support your solution, right? Anticipate objections, um, consider alternative solutions, right? Um, and then things to watch out for. Don't use magical thinking. Um, if your proposal would cost money, consider where that money uh, would come from, right? Be realistic about uh, about how to achieve this, these solutions. Um, don't simply rely on awareness uh, of the problem to solve the problem. You need actual solution, right? Um, so you want people to understand what the what the problem is and the solution, but you also sort of need to you know have um, sort of realistic right solution that people can actually follow. Right. Don't overlook laws, regulations, and restrictions. Right. Uh, the solutions have to be sort of following, you know, uh, at least basic legal uh, um, uh, legal standards. Right. Okay. So, so I think that's it for um, for for the prompt, and I will be using. Um, the sample essay to to talk more about um, what I've uh, what I've uh, included in the prompt here, right? So now, if you could turn your um, your SMG book to um, to the first sample essay essay on uh, chapter seven, right? That, so that's the essay by Patrick O'Malley um, called "More Testing, More Learning." Okay, so let's look at the first two paragraphs of, of O'Malley's um, essay here, right? So this, so, so the first, so the first paragraph is very short, right? Um, and it's just a bunch of bunch of questions, um, and then the second paragraph is all is a bit longer, um, and so this the, the first two paragraphs are his introductions, right? Um, and then you'll see here the last two sentences. Um, of the second paragraph, which is highlighted here in your, it should be highlighted in your uh, SMG book. Um, the last two sentences are his uh, thesis, right? So, and I, I talked about this already last week, so I'm not going to talk uh, 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 about that. But I'll, I'll just reread it. If professors gave brief exams at frequent intervals, students would be spurred to learn more and worry less, right? They would study more regularly, perform better on tests, and enhance their cognitive functioning, right? So, so if you notice here, it's, it's actually kind of like, a, it sounds like his listing, right? Uh, but this is still a good thesis, right? So, so it's not like, it's not a clear line between list that you should not list, right? Um, but, but he's also sort of like, he's also explaining what uh, what the problems are and then what the solutions, right? So so he's summarizing um, and explaining to us how he's going to approach. Um, so so yeah, don't worry too much about you know if your thesis sound like your listing. That's that's fine. <clears throat> okay, so I'll move on to paragraph three, right? Um, and as indicated in the. Um, in the prompt, right, in the bottom part, um, what what paragraph three is doing here, right, um, is is sort of um, give us a summary of 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 the solution, right. So, um, ideally, a professor would give an in-class test or quiz after each unit. Uh, 
chapter or focus of study, depending on the type of class uh, and course material. A physics class might require a test on concepts after every chapter, um, while a history class could necessitate quizzes covering certain time periods and major events. These exams should be given uh, weekly or at least twice monthly. Um, whenever possible, they should consist of two or three essay questions rather than multiple choice or short answer questions uh, to preserve class time for lecture and discussion. Exams should not take more than 15 or 20 minutes. Right. So, so here he's, he's giving us a kind of like a quick glance to, to what solutions he's proposing, right? And they're very detailed, right? So like a physics class would have this, and it, it has to be an essay, not multiple choice, right? So, so he's very detailed on, on, on the specific uh, aspect of, of, his, of his solution, right? Um, so yeah, so, so he's giving us clear, um, a clear argument and clear summary of solution, right? So that's a good way uh, to kind of um, open up your argument, all right? And then the fourth essay, um, or the, the fourth paragraph, that is, right? Um, so, so here he starts supporting his solution, right? So here's what I'm, here's what my solution is, and here's why, um, or so here's how it's going to work, and here's why it's going to work, right? So, so the how and the why, right? So how is it going to work? What, what, what is, like, what, what needs to be done, right? And then, uh, so that's the how, right? How is, like, how, how it's going to be done, right? And then an explanation of why um, it's going to work. Right, so those things have to be sort of like included in your body paragraphs, right? So like, how is it going to work? What are the procedures? And then why is it going to work, right? Um, right, so, so, so support your thesis, um, and then Obviously, here, as as you'll see, he's using he's using his his um, um, his research, right? Um, and pay attention to how he's using um, how he's using uh, quotations here, right? How he's introducing quotations, how he's incorporating quotations into his sentences, right? So, so chapter four, paragraph. Paragraph four, right, um, he's explaining uh, that students learn more and perform better, right? Um, uh, they learn more and perform better when, when there's more, teach, when there's more um, exams, like when there's more uh, smaller exams than, you know, one or two sort of uh, major exams, right? And then, okay, so let's go to paragraph five. I think paragraph five um, has good examples of, of how to incorporate uh, quotations and research, right? Um, and and I'm, I, you know, based on essay one, I'm, I'm seeing a lot of people um, not very comfortable yet um, in, in, in incorporating uh, re their research and quotations, right? And so, you know, like, don't, don't feel discouraged uh, if I, you know, uh, I'm a little uh, straight to the point when I, when I um, with my comments, I guess, on, uh, on, on quotations, uh, just, you know, just, just practice um, and uh, try to imitate right uh, how how your um, how other people are are doing it right, and so there there are three kind of you know uh, basic ways of incorporating your research right, um, incorporating quotations right. So so if you look at paragraph five here right, so let's read paragraph five. Many students already recognize the value of frequent testing, but their reason is that they need the professor's feedback, right? 
A Harvard study notes students, quote, strong preference for frequent evaluation in a course, right? So, th so the first way to sort of um, to incorporate quotation or your research source um, is to introduce it, right, by saying uh, a Harvard study uh, says blah, 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 right, or uh, a professor from, um, you know, from Princeton, for example, uh, says blah, 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 right. Um, if, you, if you go up to paragraph four, um, Paragraph four, somewhere in the middle, right? Um, it says here, when asked what the impact of this breakthrough research should be, they responded, and then using a colon, right? And then the quotation, right? So, so that's another way to kind of incorporate the quotation, right? So that's sort of like a way of introducing. We, we, you know, you always have to introduce um, uh, the the quotation, right? Avoid floating quotations um, at all time, right? Um, there should be no and floating quotation, right? If, if you if you looked at the the slide that I provided on on how to quote um, quote floating quotation or quotations that are not that are just their own sentence, right? You you did not incorporate them into your own sentence, <laughs> and so avoid that at all times, right? Um, <laughs> So, like, simply saying, you know, a Harvard study says this, right? And then you use a colon. Right? So, so that's, that's one way to introduce uh, a quotation, right? And then the third sentence here, Harvard students feel they learn least in courses that have, quote, only a midterm and final exam with no other personal evaluation, right? So, so kind of weaving... A quotation into your own sentence, right? That's another way um, to to incorporate quotation, right? Um, and and then the last uh, the last sentence here in a review of a number of studies of student learning, uh, Fredrickson reports that students who take weekly quizzes, blah 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 blah, right? So here um, O'Malley is not even quoting, right? But but you know that that this is from a source because he 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 pointed out here right um, so so here he's either summarizing or paraphrasing right from uh, from from his source and so that's another way of, of incorporating your sources into your own work is by summarizing and but even if you're summarizing you still need to um, to uh, to cite your sources, right? So here, just simply by saying, in a review of a number of studies of student Fredrickson reports, right? So he's he's acknowledging um, the source, right? So those are three three ways to to incorporate uh, quotations and uh, and sources into your uh, into your writing, right? And I and, and I the the more I see different. Uh, incorporations you know some people are good at just using the colon um, and and they do that for the for for all of your papers right that's that's fine but um, I want to see different ways of incorporating uh, quotations right the, the more uh, the the uh, the more you use different ways of incorporating your sources right uh, the better it will look, look to me and you know the higher your grade will be, right? I want to see that you know how to quote uh, different in different ways, right? All right, now let's look at uh, paragraph six, right? So the first sentence, another uh, closely related argument in favor of multiple exams is that they encourage students to improve their study habits, right? Um, and so what he's doing here, right, by, by using, by simply using the word another, right, um, is sort of, um, is, is telling us that this is another sort of portion of the argument, right? Um, so paragraph four um, is about students uh, learn more and perform better, 
right? So that's kind of like an immediate uh, practical outcome of, of the solution. Um, but then paragraph six, six he's saying here that um, uh, the, this solution actually improves uh, the, the study uh, habits of students, right? So, so he's saying that, you know, this is like a long-term effect, right? Like this is the long-term effect of, of the solution, right? So there's like immediate effects and then there's long-term effects, right? And so by, by pointing those, those two out, right, he, he, he makes his solution uh, more complex and stronger, right um, it's not just because it's not just you know it, it doesn't just make for good grades for the students right but it actually changes the study habits of of students right it makes them sort of um i guess like it it it, it enables them to, to to acquire um a way of studying that they can sort of like use even after um after uh you know, after being in, in school, right? Um, so, so there's a sort of like long-term effect uh, to these solutions, right? Um, so yeah, so like have, it's not just providing a solution and providing explanation for your solutions is not just sort of, you know, here's solution one, here's solution two, here's solution three, right? You want to sort of, um, and when I say, like in the comments, sometimes I'll say, um, these arguments need to be developed, right? Uh, that means that I want you to make connections, right? It's not just that here's solution one, here's solution two, here's solution three, right? I want you, um, even if you're doing that, I want you to point out to like how they're connecting to each other, right? So so just by, by saying like one sentence, right, that connects it to solution one, that connects solution two to solution one, right? And then solution three, to solution two, right? So, the, so just make some connections, right, uh, from one solution to another, and that that sort of like ties your argument together, right? And that's what I mean by, you know, by a developed argument is that you're able not only to um, to identify the solutions, but to to connect them to each other, which you know makes the the the, the argument stronger, right? Okay, so let's look at uh, paragraph eight. So paragraph eight, um, here. Uh, so research supports my proposed solution to the problem I have described, right? Um, common sense as well as my experience and that of many of my friends support. Um, why Why then do so many profess, so few professors give uh, frequent uh, brief exams, right? So, so paragraph eight sort of like um, uh, it, it sort of it, it, it's a, it's a, it's an introduction to um, to acknowledging opposing viewpoints, right? And so here he's going to talk about why, you know, even though it, you know, his solutions are very sensible and easy to easy perhaps objectively to to um, <clears throat> to apply um, a lot of professors are still not doing it right and and so he's sort of like listed here um, what sort of like what the opposing viewpoints are what what the alternative solutions are right um, and and when you and you, when you acknowledge uh, opposing viewpoints or when if you acknowledge you know al alternative solutions, um, you don't don't just mention it right and then leave it alone right. Um, really sort of like mention it and then explain it and develop it and then connect it back to your solution and how. Um, I guess like like how how does it how does it make your solution. Uh, better, right? So, so don't just mention it. Um, explain it, right? And then connect. Connecting is is the key, right? Um, being able to like connect everything uh, makes for a cohesive um, argument, right? Um, 
Right. So part part of the argument here is that uh, w one of the uh, opposing viewpoints, right, that uh, on on why professors don't um, don't do this kind of um, um, style of teaching is that you know there's a lost lecture time, right? So like so it means that there's going to be fewer or there's there's going to be more sort of like small exams, right? And then that takes away from the lecture time of the professor, right? Um, and and O'Malley sort of concedes to that. He says yes, uh, that will definitely take away from the lecture time, right? So he concedes, um, but then he's saying um, that what the students actually learn, right, in return, um, is more beneficial than the lost lecture time, right? So for him, yes, uh, he concedes to, to, to this objection that it's gonna lose, uh, uh, prof professors are going to lose lecture time, but he's saying that uh, students, you know, like having to prepare for, you know, for these small exams, it actually makes them better students and it actually uh, makes them more prepared to engage in class, um, right? And then let's just go to the works cited page here, right? So, so the last page of, of this essay. So for our purposes, um, your works cited page will have, here it has references, right? And this is just a different style of, um, of, of writing a uh, works cited page. So it says references, but for us, since we're using MLA style, um, instead of references, you want to write works cited, right? So that's, that's what I want to see in the works cited page on the very top. It has to say works cited, right? But uh, more importantly, um, a lot of the, f the, uh, the first paper didn't have a uh, proper um, format, right? But it's, it's really quite simple, right? So, so the first line of your entry uh, is not indented, right? And then everything else is indented. So look at here, the, the first line with the last name, um, I don't know how to say this, uh, Baylock, right, S. So so that's the last name of the, of the author of the source, right? So that's not indented, so that sort of sticks out. And then the rest, the second line and the third um, is indented, right? So this, you should follow this, uh, this format, right? Um, and the reason for this is that why the first line sticks out is that it's easier for us to see, um, right? So, so when, when, we, when we go back to your in-text citation and then you have the last name there and then we, we go to the work cited page to, to look at the, the references, right? Um, the last name sticks out, so it's, so it's easy to, to spot it, right? That's, that's that's the the point why you know the 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 second line is indented right um, so yeah so just just follow this um, this structure with a with the work cited on top instead of references right um, so I think that's all for for now um, and I hope you read. Uh, the, the two articles that I sent you, they say, I say, and paragraphs, right? Um, I think they're really helpful um, in sort of uh, explaining, you know, arguments and why we argue and what's the point of, of arguing, right? Um, and so um, it's doing that, but it's also giving you templates, right, um, on, on how to uh, construct sentences and paragraphs. Right, so, so try to read that and try to imitate uh, these structures. Right, um, right and so that's it for, for this video. Um, and feel free to email me and meet with me through Zoom um, if you need um, more help. All right, thank you. Bye-bye.